South West Donegal is very rich in music, very rich in fiddle music and, and um, unusual tunes. Well, Thielen is a community in its own right. It doesn't have its own church or parish or priest. It's part of the wider community, which is the parish of Glen Column As I roved out is a small delta. There's a population of about 300 people. I'm told that there was a thousand people in Thielen at the beginning of the century. Uh, the only access into this parish before the 19th century was by sea. To get to it uh, by land was absolutely impossible because it was an area which was like swamps or bogland. Is all mixed in with the, the people and 
the music. It was, the, as far as social life, it was the most thing, you know, the big nights and the dances, and people would all gather together and play. But um, I think just with the, even the different tunes that were based on the likes of the sea, stories from the sea, you know, named after even the sounds of the sea, like Thum the Farraga and um, the Atlantic Roaring, you know, so I think um, it all just fitted in really well with the way of life, you know, the, with the fiddle playing, the fishing, the weaving, the spinning, you know, everything was hand done. And um, the interesting thing too is the way that people learn tunes so well it was before the electricity came in. If you heard a tune once, you had to. They were very susceptible to just learning it very quickly, because they had no way of taping it and playing it back. And they'd be able to say who played it or maybe have a particular story about when it was played or when it was passed on to somebody else. And there'd be this whole story. And suddenly the tune becomes only one little part of it. And you realise that the music, the music itself, traditional music, is only a small part of something much bigger, a way of life. Now, when I would be growing up as a boy, there would be more emphasis on farming, all kinds of farming. Everybody helped out on that day. You had communal work. Nobody got paid. You just shared your work going round. I didn't. I went to see somebody's stick today. We all got together. All the neighbours went to him. When I got my stick, they came to me, and everybody owed each other. No money changed hands. Just. Big meal and a few drinks. <laughs> That's all we want. To meet these people in their own environment and to see where they got their music from was amazing. I suppose I remember a time when a lot of my friends would be heading off to discos. I would be going into the pub playing and having meeting these older people. And now a lot of those younger ones have missed out on these older people and they've gone. And um, they've got they're just they've got a great sense of fun, but they're so wise. They've seen so much in all terms, all human terms, and uh, you can learn so much from them. But they've got a good, most of them have a good sense of humour as well. James Byrne heard a guy up in the pub in Kerry whistling a tune that he never heard before. And he just remembered the first bar of it, how it started. And uh, they came back to my house and uh, I said, uh, did you pick up any of it? He said, I did, just the first bar. And when I heard it, I said, I heard that ages ago. We danced with that tune. Oh, he said, that's great. And I lilted it. And uh, just twice only, I lilted it twice. James Byrne had the fiddle and then James played it all the way through and when he was finished playing I said he made a better job of playing it on the fiddle than I did Lilty. <laughs>
Oh, we danced all the old time dances, highlands, barn dances, waltzes, and circus. Maggie picking, corn rigs. You know, that used to only happen, you know, at certain things, certain times. And you would be, the girls would be invited, the boys they would come, and the musicians were invited to come. And we dance, maybe from nine o'clock to three in the morning. Fun, fun factor playing in the pub. Just the, you know, the, you know, you might sing a song one minute, then you get somebody else, some other character to sing, and then there be tunes. And there's nice kind of intermingling of people, and um, a nice surprise when there's a mixture of music and songs. Symbol of power, is a Come, Mason, Chaworr, Traditionally, Irish was uh, the spoken language, and uh, it's a very old language, and something we may be proud of, uh, for the simple reason when most of the Celtic languages died, the Irish had survived. A bridge wa marwen, glak mesh na rawor, es na kwinter ni smohu egi kin. Snawol ni eren doin, a wak tu le fios, na mi heim sa wala udi nimerj. Kiri hag a score, couple lag a spluff, stama win go way much further. Mar a yas Crop a mer ma buhav, August scholar er na goer sn held you. I'll tell you how strong it was once upon a time. There was a competition in houses for traditional singing, maybe. They had all different ways of having the winner. There'll be singing competitions of who could sing more songs. Maybe I'll go on for maybe two nights to see who could wipe one the other guy with more songs. And there'll be who had a song that wasn't heard before. So they had different ways of 
of judging how, who's going to win the competition. But this particular night, it was up in Bogach, which is not just about three miles from here. And this house up in Bogach, they had a competition. And they were also strong traditional singing up there in Bogach, so it's only outside the carry. And the one of the competition this night was going to have to sing a song that the other guy couldn't match. Whoever came up with the song, and during the night if that guy couldn't sing that song, well, that the fellow was the winner. Who was the first to come up with the song that the fella couldn't sing? Was the winner. So we had a, a, a real famous traditional singer here at the time. He died in 1921, should be around before that, who would be, this would be in his prime, who would be probably in the end of the last century, called Cundy Finches of Cunningham. Cundy Cunningham, he was one of the biggest original singers of the area at the time. He was from Tilden, he lived down actually, close to the college. So who was up at the competition? He was the, the champion of this area, and he became the champion of the Bugger area. So, the song came up was Onion Oragada, that's the name of the song, short little song, and the bugger guy sang it, and uh, Cundy never heard the song in his life before, never heard it, and he knew it was in big trouble, and that been so short a simple song, the guy was sure he, he, he knew it, you know, but there was a, there was a referee of some kind taking notes of it, you know, he says to him, Call it, call it Kinsha, you know, sing that one. And Kundi says to him, you're not insulting me, he's making me sing that little short song. Now we'll get that later on. Come up with something better and we can keep it going. So they had to have a break at some stage, so they had a break for about a half an hour or so. So when the break came, the guy ran out the door as fast as he could, couldn't he come in, because he had no clue what was, how, how he was going to sing this song, but he knew how, how of one chance he might have. So he ran all the way back down three miles to his grandmother in, 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 in Kappa. And he woke up in the middle of the night looking for this song. He had the drift of it, you see, but he hadn't the words of it. So the old lady thought he was crazy. But anyway, she accommodated him. She says she knew the song. And she sang it for him about maybe, I don't know how many times, till he had it off. It was only a short, only a short three verses, and it was written in the book there, it was only a short song. So he must have kept on it in his mind all the time running back up. And he kept, he had, he had to concentrate on this song, because he couldn't make it obvious to the guy that he wanted to sing it now. But the guy came up in, in the end of the night, he says, by the way, you never sang that short song. Oh, he says, oh, I was right, I nearly forgot, he says, and then he sang it for him. So that's the kind of stuff used to go on now. That's how strong traditional singing was that time. I'm a whale, you the child, to the water and the wild, with a fairy hand in hand, for the world's more full of weeping than you cannot understand. They believed a lot in fairies. Uh, Nobody seems to know anything about them now. They seem to have disappeared. Uh, they also believed a lot in ghosts. Uh, most of the stories, like they were told, uh, I think it was really to make young people afraid so they wouldn't be running out at night after dark. I remember in my young days, uh, I'd hear so many ghost stories and uh, stories about fairies that you'd be afraid to go out after dark. As you grow older, you get sense and you don't believe those things anymore. But there are still people who have a certain beliefs and superstition. If a fisherman is going to fish, if he met a woman with red hair, he'd turn back. Where the wandering water pushes from the hills above Glencar, in pools among the rushes that scarce will be the star, we seek for slumbering thrall. And the old days. There was no other choice but to eat fish in rural areas and coastal areas. And the results have still been seen today. You get people here that up close to over 90, some of them. Some of them, almost 90, can walk up and down to Carrick. Some of them, over 90, can walk up and down to Carrick. 
So they had fish in their genes. Maybe sure enough we would go out uh, nearly every day for a week or so. And then take days off in between. Because um, you couldn't just be hard. You get tired to be hard every day. It depends on them. It depends on the sea. Get one hard day out of the sea washing over ye. Uh, the following day you don't feel like going out. Rough. Oh, I seen ourselves out nights, and you could see nothing before you only foam. Every sea rising over you, and <coughs> there's only two down the stern. There's only three of us there in the boat. Two down the stern, one with a bucket and the other with a pump, keeping the boat dry. I was usually up in the bow in case, watching out in case anything, nets or the be anything in the way for now be coming in. I was never scared. Yes. Never. No. No, I was never afraid of the sea. Not to say, but I prayed. But apart from that, I was never afraid. Never. Because, uh, if you get afraid, there's no point in being out. Because you know in your heart and soul, the night can change, the wind can change. You just don't know where you're going to, how you're going to make it. But you live in hopes. That's how it is. August green year dying. Fishermen used to come in on a weekend to divide the money. It was just a place that would hold uh, six or seven. And the skipper come in with his crew, divide the money on the crew there, round the table, and have a few drinks. I just don't know who's going to drop in, you know, and there's always going to be an air of expectancy about it, which would be nice, and then there'd be an air of, it's just very cosy, and then it's a real locals pub, and there's no television in it or anything blasting like that, it's just very natural, I think that's the, the beauty of it. tunes if you have a need for music and you like it 
and you like a certain tune that you want to remember and want to have, you'll pick it up. That's how I used to do it. I didn't take anything off the sheet, music sheets. My ears. <laughs> Tunes must be learned by ear. You know, that's my view. You should always teach tunes by ear. It's, it's, it's the only way to learn traditional music. I couldn't learn a tune from notation. I actually avoid it. Subconsciously almost, you know. It's just, it's, it's, it's hopeless. It's a bad way to learn. It's a bad way to learn traditional music. Your imagination's never fired in the same way. Whatever was given to me was given to me freely because that's the way the people who gave it to me received it. That was the deal, you, you just gave, and that's what I'll do till the end of my days. People all around are very, when it comes to music, they are very, very, very positive in their attitude. They will help you. They will push you up all the time. Never, never put you down. Always push you up. Even if you go and play like, if you don't play well, nobody will give you bad criticism. Everybody will just say, "Oh, that's good, excellent," you know. And, and, and I find it to be nice, you know, there's no levels, you have these great musicians playing and you can just play with them even though you've been playing for a few months. No problem, you know, it wouldn't happen anywhere else in the world, you know, this is a special place.